in which they're even really different at all is in that run defense where Alabama's the best team in the country and Georgia's. What if I were to tell you that you can make your own radio with no soldering, no electronics experience, would only need a few simple components, and would work without an outlet, plug, or even batteries? As crazy as that sounds, it's real, it's fun, and let's make one. But first, let's learn about AM radio. Take it away, me. Thanks, me. Alright, each radio station will convert sound waves into electromagnetic waves. You can think of these waves like the ones you see when a rock falls into water. The number of times a wave goes up and down in a second is called its frequency, measured in hertz. AM broadcasts from these ranges. So for example, if you're listening to station 850, their radio waves are going up and down 850,000 times a second. That frequency is constant, but they will add the actual voice sound waves to that base signal, which is why they call it AM, amplitude modulation. Let's start making our radio by 3D printing the main parts. Now, if you don't have a 3D printer, but what? I mean, they're awesome, you can... Anyway, if you don't have one yet, then you can search for websites that will find people near you that can print it for you. The key to isolating each frequency is to use a coil of wire. We want to wind this perfectly, so I used a stack of books and a pencil to help me. Take your time, wind tightly, and avoid overlapping. And try not to let go of the tension or the wire may unwind. And use a piece of tape if you need to take a break. This wire is coated with an enamel insulator, and since we will be changing the length of this coil, we need to expose some of the metal wire by using sandpaper. Do this gently since we don't want each wire to short out the next. Wipe away any wire sandings when done. This coil piece should slide firmly into the base. I mentioned no soldering, so I thought of using these small springs to easily hold and conduct across components. The left side of the wire can be clipped and folded over. The right side needs to be clipped and sanded to remove the enamel and then placed into the closest spring. This is a diode. What it does is only allow current to travel in one direction. This is perfect, since the radio signals are sent in alternating current, this diode will cut the wave in half, creating a pulsating direct current that will vibrate the speaker to produce sound. I was trying to think of the best way to shorten the coil of wire, and I thought of using a paperclip. It will act as a conductive bar and is close to the coil but not touching, and later we will be sliding a piece of foil to close the circuit at a frequency. Cut a small segment of wire and sand off each end. This will go from the paper clip to the left spring. And we can't just use any speaker or headphone. We have to use a piezo crystal earpiece. It needs very little current to vibrate the air to produce sound. Let's take a piece of foil and fold it into a thin strip. It needs to rest gently on both the paper clip and the sanded off area of the coil of wire. We can move the foil to shorten the length of the wire that the current is traveling through and that is how we can search for different radio frequencies. The most important part of this is the antenna, which is just a long piece of wire. The longer the wire, the louder the audio will be. We don't need a battery since we are just using the strength of the radio signal to run this circuit. Cut about 15 to 20 feet of wire and sand off one end to attach to the left spring. Now this circuit needs to be grounded, and not because it's out too late to even call it and no one to be home, no. Because the circuit needs to go from positive to negative, and the negative will be the actual ground, the earth. We will do this by wrapping one end to the kitchen sink. The metal pipes from the kitchen sink travel directly into the ground. Cut, sand, and attach this wire to the right side spring. It's finally time to test out our radio. To set it up, unwind and straighten the antenna wire. I noticed I got a slightly better signal when I placed the antenna higher up. The ground wire will wrap around the metal part of the faucet. Move the foil tuner back and forth until you hear a station. It will sound very faint in the earpiece, so make sure you're in a quiet place with any loud devices turned off. I can hear the station fine, but the audio was too faint to record, so I plugged this into the guitar amp so you can hear it. one. 
paid. Find tips and more at OneThingUS.com. What's your... We want to protect their financial interests and the relationship that they have with their kids. Everyone involved in a divorce is affected by the breakup of the family. Not perfect, but definitely not bad for a very simple homemade device. Now before I go, I want to try something crazy. Can we make our own diode from regular everyday items? Remember, a diode allows current to flow in only one direction. Let's make our own using a pencil, a safety pin, and a razor blade. We first need to add a layer of oxide to the razor blade by heating it up with a very hot flame until the steel turns blue. Next, we cut a small piece off the sharpened pencil. When we attach the safety pin into the pencil lead, and the lead makes a point contact with the razor blade, current will be forced to flow in only one direction, just like the diode. This method is much more difficult since our homemade diode is not as good as the manufactured diode, and this takes a lot longer to work since you have to tune the coil and also the pencil on the razor. I spent a few hours tweaking everything until finally, I heard this rewarding sound. I hope you enjoyed this and maybe learned something. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.